Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black gloss. I'm wearing a grey t-shirt with my logo on it. Pretty cool, right? And I'm sitting in my office because in this video, we're going to talk about charging a Tesla at home and adding some automation to it. Now, this is a feature that I think has been around in North America for a while, but it's only just been released in Australia this week, and it's called Charge on Solar. Now, what it basically means is that, and there's a whole bunch of prerequisites, and you need to have this, you need to have that, so I'll put details down below and I'll put chapter markers, you can jump ahead and that kind of stuff. But basically what it means is that you can plug your car in at home if you've got solar panels and a power wall and you can tell the Tesla app and the system and stuff to only use solar to charge your car. Now what does that mean? So let me show you here in, in the Tesla app how it's worked in the past. So if I go across to my solar setup, you can see that at the moment my solar panels are generating 5.7 kilowatts and the house is using 0.6 and 4.9 is going to the grid. So now if I started charging my car, so if I go start charging, I've got the car plugged in, at the moment I've got the car set to its lowest possible charge rate. So at the moment it's only charging at 5 amps which will equate to about 1.2 kilowatts in the Tesla app. I know the numbers are a bit, mm, but that's what the app says. So there we go. So now only 4.1 is going to the grid. But what I can do is I can adjust this and I can bump it all the way up to 32 amps and then pull 7, 7 point something kilowatts and take as much solar that my panels can generate and not give anything back to the grid. But here's the challenge is if I'm using too much, if a cloud comes over the house and my panels aren't generating as much or it's later in the day, you can see there what's happening now is I'm pulling 7.3 according to the app, but my panels are only generating 6.1. So that means 1.9 is actually coming out of my power wall at the moment, or if I didn't have a power wall, it would come out of the grid, which is costing me money and it's using the grid. So what I would normally do is I would manually have to come in here and adjust the levels of my ampage and lower it and raise it so that it kind of balances this out, which, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's a bit of a pain in the tush. So it would be wonderful, and let me just bump that all the way down to five while we're at it. It would be wonderful if you could automate the system. So if you could just say, you know what, only use excess solar, but once you're using more than excess solar, dial down the charging rate of the car. Now, there are a few third-party ways to do this. Um, the one that most people are most familiar with is an app slash service called Charge HQ. And so that's like a website or an app that you give access to the whole system here and then it will, you know, do those calculations for you and it'll adjust the charge rate of your car to match how much solar is coming in. So you're only using solar and you're never pulling anything from the grid. So it'll lower and raise it. So Charge HQ. I can't actually use Charge HQ because unfortunately we have Enphase inverters on our solar panels and Enphase have not released the APIs that Charge HQ need in order to talk to the panels and so they can't talk to each other and um, that's that. So we couldn't use Charge HQ, but if you want to, Charge HQ is definitely something to worth, worth looking into, particularly if you don't have all the prerequisites that you're going to need for the Tesla solution. Now there's also a few other solutions. So for example, there's an app called the Stats app, which is a really cool app. I did a video about it, put a link up above. Um, but one of the features that they released a few months ago is this charge on solar thing. So here we go, here we are in the Stats app. And if I tap on this little sun, I have the option to say, hey, I want you to set that, save X amount of kilowatts for my uh, for, for the home so the home can pull up to 1.2 kilowatts but everything else I want to go to the car and the stats app will adjust the charging rate accordingly now that works pretty well the the thing that I don't like particularly about the stats app is its reaction time is quite slow so what I mean by that is let's say I'm getting I don't know, let's say I'm getting seven kilowatts uh, of solar and six of it's going into the car and suddenly a cloud comes over. So now I'm only getting three kilowatts of solar. And so the time that it takes for the stats app to go, oh, you're only getting three, I'll adjust that. It's only about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, but that 30 seconds to a minute over a period, of, like if it's one of those days where the cloud's coming in, coming out, what have you, it just, it's almost pointless sort of thing because by the time it changes the sun come, the sun's back out on the panels and then changes again so it's 
it's not that quick to do it. It works, but it's just not that quick. Again, if you're not monitoring it like the nerdy nerd that I am, you probably wouldn't even notice. It doesn't really matter that much. But that was one little caveat about how that system worked. The other way that you can do it is there are a couple of other apps, I think, that do this. I'm not familiar with them, but if there are, please let me know down in the comments. The third way is if you get a wall connector that has got sort of some brains and some smarts and it can do that as well. So for example, there's a company in the UK called Zappy. There's a Kiwi company, I think they're called Evernex, which I saw at the All Things Electric uh, show. And I think Woolbox, who are based in Spain, also do, uh, you know, they'll adjust your charging rate according to the solar. I haven't used any of those, so I can't give an opinion on that. But very excitingly, now Tesla lets you do the charge on solar thing. So let's first look at the prerequisites that you need for this, because it's not just a matter of, oh, I've got a Tesla and I've got a Tesla wall connector slash charge. I know the wall connector that's on the wall that you plug into the car to charge the car is not the charger. I know technically it's not the charger, but everyone calls it the charger, so I'm just going to call it the charger for now. So the charger that you plug in, the Tesla charger, you do need one of those, so you need that, and it needs to be um, of the version 3, I think. You need a Model S, Model X, Model Y, Model 3, 2020, uh, 2023.32 or higher. So I think that's the software version. Uh, you need a Powerwall um, with solar on-site, and that has to have software version 23.12.10 or higher. And you need the Tesla app 4.3.5. It's a mouthful, but I'll put something on the screen so you can see that anyway. So those are things that you need. And the reason why you need a power wall is, I'm assuming here, I don't know this for a fact, but it's not actually the power wall that's doing this. What you need is you need the gateway. So when you get a power wall installed, by the way, I know I haven't done a video about my power wall yet. I keep meaning to do it. In fact, I've recorded it, but it was a bit rubbish, so I need to do it again. I will do a video about my power wall, I promise, eventually. Um, but with the power wall, so the power wall is the battery that powers your house. But then when you install the power wall, you also need to install this thing called the Tesla gateway, which is kind of like the brains. So that communicates between the battery and your house and the solar and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually, I think, the gateway that's doing all of this because it knows how much solar is coming in and going out and so forth. The last little prerequisite that you need for this to work is you need to log out and log back in of the Tesla app. So apparently this feature got turned on like three or four days ago here in Australia, and I was excitedly going into my app every day going, is it here, is it here, is it here? And it wasn't, and it turns out it was, but I had to log out and log back in, and even to the point where, so I logged out and logged back, it's now Friday the 1st, 1st? Oh my goodness, Friday the 1st of March, I think. Yes, Friday the 1st of March. Um, and I logged out and logged back in last night, and hey presto, there's this thing, Charge on Solar, that showed up. And I thought, great, I could shoot this video tomorrow. So I came in this morning, set everything up, got in, and the Charge on Solar had disappeared from the app. And I went into here, I went you know, all over the place, and I could not find where it was in the app. Turns out I had to log out and log back in again. So hopefully, um, once I've set this up, I don't have to log out and log back in every time I want this to work. And that's the thing. I haven't looked at this because I thought I'd save it so you could join me on this little adventure. So let's go ahead and tap on Charge on Solar and see how to set it up. So drive on sunshine. Um, plug in your vehicle at home during the day to charge using the excess clean energy guaranteed by your solar system. Set your charge limit and locations to tell your vehicle when and where to charge only from excess solar. Now that's clever. So I like that it's at home and it says locations. I wonder if you can do multiple locations, so like your place and your mate's place or what have you. But let's let's see how this, this all works. Um, so set your vehicle to charge as usual from any source enough daily. Yep. Um, then reserve part of your vehicle battery to charge when there's excess solar available. Okay, so as I, I've, I've had a little bit of a look at this, um, like on videos and things like, Tesla's actually got like instructional videos on their website, which are okay, not, well, we'll see how, how well I've understood from those videos. So there's two bars. There's the one on the left, and that's the one that you set your normal charge limit. So basically charge off solar or whatever up until this point, and anything from that point to the next little dot that you set, that's only off of solar. So for example, in the example they've given you here, is that up until 40% battery percentage, your car will charge 
off whatever, but then when it hits 40, from 40 to 100, it'll only charge off solar and it will adjust the rate accordingly. So continue. And then it says select where your vehicle will charge in relation to um, your power all and, and your thing. And you can drag the map to adjust. So, okay, so you can do that. And um, yep, so I've selected where I am. And now it's having a bit of a think. I'd play some elevator music, but you know, copyright and all that jazz. Success. So that's done. Okay, happy day. So now here's the tutorial. Plug your vehicle at home during the day. I love how they have to specify during the day. It's like, I plugged my thing at night and it's not getting solar. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there'd be someone. Um, set your vehicle battery to charge. Yep. Um, then reserve. Now, I think, I think it's really important that they've done the location thing. I think that's very clever because imagine if you went to, let's say there's a charger at your work. So you go to work, you plug in, and then when it gets to 40%, it would stop charging because it's not getting any. So, so yeah, I can see why they did the whole location thing. So we go finished. And now you can edit change on solar settings anytime by tapping on here. Okay, okay so there's a little, um, like a little burger button over there. And so change on solar, so we can go change that. So charge to 40% from any source, that's fine. In fact, so we could change that to 30%. And then we can say anything from there to 100% charge on solar. And then you can also unpair from your setup. And let's just tap a little I to see what it says. Oh, there's a tutorial. So if you tap on tutorial, oh, it just takes you back to the tutorial that it showed us at the beginning. And so now, okay, interesting. So it's showing charge on solar. It's showing that it's only five amps again. So I, I'm guessing that I have to actually bump it up and it'll adjust it. So let's go ahead and bump it all the way up to maximum. And let's see what happens. So we're only getting 5.9. It'll be, it'll, actually this is a perfect day to do it. I don't know if it'll happen while I'm recording, but it's one of those days where there's like thin wispy clouds that come in and go out. So our you know, the amount of solar that our panels are getting will, will be going up and down a fair bit. Now, I also did see a little caveat that what it said is that the charge of solar thing will keep at least 1.2 kilowatts left over for the home or for export. So it's never going to use every single little scrap. It'll always keep a little bit. But there you go. That looks like that looks like it's working just fine. So, you know, it's, it's jumped up to 5.5, we're getting 6.6, .6. it's still going, okay, maybe it's not 1.2, maybe it's 0.2 kilowatts that it'll still pull out to the grid, so it still puts a little bit out to the grid, and yeah, so that, that, that looks like, because normally if I was setting that to 32 amps, that would be 7, 7 point something kilowatts according to the, to the app, whereas now... It's keeping it at 5.5. It just jumped up to 5.7 because we were just getting a little bit more um, juice. Now, what I'm going to do, just to make this interesting, I wonder where. Oh, I don't have my iPad with me. Ah, oh. so what I'm going to do actually is I am going to turn on the air conditioning in the lounge because that's a, a big AC unit and that uses quite a lot of power. And we'll see if it adjusts it. So let's go ahead and jump into our Akara app. So this is the app that I use. I've got you know, automate and all that, all that, all that cool stuff. If you're interested in home automation, I'm happy to do a video about that as well. Um, you can see there that, you know, the light strip that's behind me, that's controlled by this app as well. So I can turn the light strip off and I can turn the light strip on. I'm so easily entertained, but let's go ahead and turn the living room air conditioning on and turn the guest bedroom air conditioning, or guest bed, it's Archie's bedroom. I shouldn't call him a guest. Um, I don't know why I said guest bedroom. So now our home usage, should start raising and so then it should start dropping the charge of solar and this is really fast like again the thing that oh yeah so it's we're getting more solar we're getting 6.8 so it's jumped 6.1 this is working really well i you know i was ready to be fairly unimpressed by how well this did or didn't work but yeah no color me um color me impressed Although, the, maybe the, is the air conditioning come on in the lounge? Here we go. 
yeah, there we go. So it's bumped up to 5.7, it's dropped it down to 5.9. So yeah, there we go. It's, this works really, really well. So if you do have um, a Tesla Powerwall and you've got solar and you've got all the stuff that you need to have and you're in Australia, log out of your app, log back in, switch this on, set it up. I am very happy right now. That is really good. And it's just, it's very quick. It's, it's, it's oh, oh I, I spoke too soon. Um, there we go. So for a second there, it was discharging from the, um, from the battery. So there we go, it's taking 0.1 from the battery. Let's see how quickly it, I spoke too soon. Ah, oh, no, but there we go. It, yeah, it was, it was a few seconds. So it wasn't a big deal. Back to my summation. If you are in Australia and you've got all the prerequisites for this, go and do it. It's, it's working really well. I hope this video was helpful. I hope this was useful. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, have found it useful, please like and subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for your support and we'll uh, catch you in the next one. Safe and happy driving. Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black glasses. I'm wearing a red t-shirt with my logo on it. Pretty cool, right? <coughs> Oops. Okay, let's... <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> let's try that again. Oh, I needed a burp so bad for the last few... Oh, wow. Oh, excuse me. That is so cool. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy that that works so well. Hercules, Hercules. Ah, oh, that is, oh, that makes life so much easier. Yeah, color me impressed. Color me impressed. That works well. Why didn't, ah. Oh. One day, I would love to know, because I mean, I think this came out in the US like a year ago, maybe even longer. One day, I'd love to sit down for someone at Tesla and find out why it took so long. Because I mean, you'd think it was just a software thing. Yeah. Although maybe our electrical system is different from there, so I don't know. But that is, that is darn tootin' good.